One out of six men in the United States will be diagnosed with prostate cancer during their lifetime, with approximately 200,000 men being diagnosed annually. One out of 35 men will die from this disease. By 2020, approximately 65 million men will be over 45 years of age in the United States, and since age is the greatest single risk factor for the development of prostate cancer, there will be an absolute increase in the diagnosis of this disease. So the question is, do all men diagnosed with prostate cancer need curative therapies with their known risks, side effects, and associated loss of quality of life? Since the discovery of serum prostatic specific antigen in 1979 and its role in screening and the early detection of prostate cancer, we have been successful in diagnosing earlier stage and low volume disease, with almost 80% of men having organ confined prostate cancer at the time of their diagnosis. Although there is controversy surrounding early detection and screening programs, there is still ample evidence that there is a reduced death rate from prostate cancer in the PSA screened population, especially when applied to the high risk population. Those men would be the younger population with a family history of prostate cancer or African American ancestry. Once an individual is diagnosed with prostate cancer, it is imperative to determine whether he is low risk for disease progression or conversely high risk and needs local curative therapy. Many tests are in development and some are available at this time to help us make this all important decision. Recently, at the Michigan Institute of Urology, we have assisted in the development and implementation of three-dimensional transperineal mapping biopsies of the prostate. What makes this biopsy technique different is that we use a template or guide which allows us to take a biopsy of the prostate every five millimeters apart, thereby mapping out the entirety of the prostate. One of its applications is to assist us in determining if an individual truly has low-risk disease which would make him an ideal candidate for watchful waiting or active surveillance. For those with focal disease in just one area of the prostate, they may be offered focal cryotherapy, in a sense the male lumpectomy, which would be an alternative to treating the entire prostate, with a potential benefit of fewer treatment side effects. Up to 65% of prostate cancer patients who undergo mapping these biopsies will be found to have multiple areas of cancer or even higher grade disease, necessitating local curative therapy of the entire prostate, thereby excluding them from an active surveillance protocol. We are presently in the midst of researching the application of chromosomal marker studies to also assist us in determining a patient's treatment plan. Certain markers, such as P10, a tumor suppressor gene, appears to determine the growth and spread of one's prostate cancer and its absence may signify a more aggressive course of disease, necessitating choosing a more aggressive therapy. At this present time, screening and the early detection of prostate cancer remain an essential part of the overall program. It is imperative that we continue to develop technologies to help us and our patients determine who needs to be screened and who needs to be treated. Thank you.